Hello everybody. This is uh, one of the prototypes for the internal magazine pump action shotgun. And uh, I don't think I ever made a video on this one, so I'm doing it now before I print the next one. Uh, this is, if you haven't seen it before, the internal magazine pump action shotgun, uh, which doesn't have a name right now, but I'm working on it. I'll probably make a YouTube poll about uh, name selection soon. Uh, anyway, it's got this big uh, magazine up front, which stays attached to the blaster at, at all times. And it's got this priming handle here. And then that is the uh, bolt breech thing. So this holds silly shells, which load in like that. And then this closes on top of that, fires, and then extracts it and ejects it like that. This magazine in particular holds six shells. I do also have uh, some other magazine options. This one is three, three shells on this one. I also have a four, a five. This is the six, and I think I'm going to work on a seven and an eight. Um, to, just in case your printer can fit bigger ones, you might as well do it if you have the space. Um, this is the second prototype of the blaster, and this is the one that I did right before I sent it to beta testers. Um, and then all of these lighter blue parts are parts that I reprinted during beta. So this is sort of a mix between second prototype and the first beta uh, file set. So we've got this nice light blue filament there showing the newer parts. Um, the changes between the previous prototype, the red one I had, and this one are a ton, and I'm not going to go over all of them, but some of the highlights are the magazine has been improved, uh, it's more reliable. Um, the way that the magazine attaches to the blaster is also more reliable now, or stronger. Um, a lot of the shaping of the parts has been improved and smoothed over and made nicer. Um, there has been a lot of uh, adding of, like, um pictograms and stuff like that. Uh, I don't have it on this particular print of it, but on the current beta version, there's a little arrow here pointing downwards to show you where to load the shells. Because in order to load this, you hold it like this, and you have your shell in a sort of C shape. You just kind of slide it down that rail like that, and then push it in. Um, it's easier for me to do that with the left hand. But that's so, uh, when you're loading, it pulls the previous shell back a little bit so then it can go down because the breech of this blaster is in that position right there. This is in the magazine, like that. This is in the breech. And then if you tried to push down on that, it would just kind of tilt. So this loading technique is, so you have it like this, you push that down, and then as you slide it back, it pulls back that previous shell. And then you can slide this one forwards. Aside from helping with you know, uh, making the loading uh, process more reliable, it's just really easy to just kind of, you know, slam some shells in there, just like that. Uh, I have a separate video showing loading and unloading of this blaster. Um, the uh, extractor and ejector and all that stuff has been improved. Uh, this is the shell stabilizer up here. Uh, I'll just prime it. This is the shell stabilizer, which has been improved uh, in printing. It's you now prints a lot nicer. Uh, the extractor, which is this guy here, has been improved. Now it's got this nice big button with which to disengage it. Um, that is if you have a different shell loaded, like uh, a longer super extra shell. That's so you can kind of put it in there and then hit this button here to not extract it uh, when you are priming back the blaster. You know, if you need to troubleshoot something or if you want to leave a um, bottlenose shell in the blaster uh, so you can then single load darts into the back. It's a nice option to have. There we go. Uh, what else? Um... I added a stock on this version. The previous version just had an end strike stock, but now this one had a bunch of different stocks. Um, one of them is a Picatinny rail back. Um, 
so you can use a Picatinny attached stock. Uh, this one is a buffer tube. This was the first test print and it was a little bit too big, so I shaved it down a bit. But we got that. This is just a buffer tube from Worker on the back here. Um, and trigger, trigger and the catch and the plunger were all improved in this version. Um, and then in between this version and the current uh, one in CAD, the newest, freshest file set, there are tons of little tiny improvements. Like there's now screws between these two parts. There's now extra dovetails underneath this Picatinny rail that hold it in place uh, more along the top here. Um, there's better locations of screws in the front. Uh, some of the angles of the feed geometry have been changed. Um, the shape on the back of the uh, follower here has been made kind of uh, more aggressively sloped. So right now it's sort of like this, but I've tilted it down to like that. So it goes forwards easier when you're just doing this. That lasts a little bit, pushes it down. So that's now smoother on the newest one. Um, improved how the ball detents in here work. Uh, this is going to be hard to show. There's a ball detent notch there, and one on the other side, right there. And then, same for the front, right uh, up here, and right there. These little dots that detents lock into, and those detents are on this sliding piece here. So it locks back when you are loading the blaster so it doesn't slide around and that locks forwards when you're firing the blaster so it doesn't slide around. So those have been improved in the newer version. Um, a ton of the fitment has been improved. Um, so the tolerance of the body bars that make up this blaster structure uh, has been tightened a little bit so it doesn't wobble at all. It's super good. Um, there's interlocking geometry between a bunch of these body pieces now um, that kind of lock them together. So there's a lot of like um, shapes and then slots and then they kind of go into place there so they can't wiggle back and forth. Kind of all locked together. Uh, yeah, tons and tons and tons of changes. Uh, too much for me to, to list here um, as well as all those different magazine options that I've worked on more recently um, and more stocks as well. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it in terms of changes for this. Um, so I'm going to load this up, fire it a bit, and then uh, maybe I'll show you a field takedown. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, just a normal basic blaster overview for you. Pretty good. So one last thing is that this thingy back here, oh, this folding orange thing in there, i show that to you badly that thing right there. That is the ejector, so the shell hits that as it's coming out, and then it gets flung out the side. Uh, on the newest version, that has been increased to having two springs. Uh, one of the beta testers uh, was using this in a game, and he was having some trouble with these not fully flying out of the blaster, because he was priming it so quickly uh, that the extractor in there, it's spring-loaded. So, he was running it back so quickly that it hadn't fully flipped into position before the shell hit it. So it's just kind of gently pushing the shells out as opposed to fully being like a doorstop and flinging the shells out the side. So that's been improved in the newer version. But uh, yeah, let's do some firing. So I've got 3x uh, silly shell here, and I've got another 3x here. And then one of the things with this blaster is that it cannot use shells that have uh, darts sticking out past the tip of a normal silly shell so these two do not fit in the magazine however you can single load them into the breech directly so this will fit in there but it will not go down into the magazine so it can just sit there now can i do this firing in a way where you'll be able to see it at all i don't know if you saw that Those are getting a really nice spread. Uh, it's hard to show it to you. I'd say that it's like 
what is that, 30 feet away, this is a very long room, 30 feet away, um, it's like this big of a spread? I don't know. Let me, let me willy-nilly guess how big that is. I don't know, it's like a, it's like a, I don't know, 32 inch spread, let's say. 30. 29 inch spread, more or less. Um, and then we got Mega XL, which you of course can single load into the breech. Where is that mega shell? Did it land on the desk? No. Did it land on the floor? Yes. I got the mega. Right there. Uh, what else do I have? I got a. I got two more three X shells. Right. Some missile like darts into that. And of course, uh, these are silly shells. Uh, so there's tons of options for ammo. Rival full-length darts, half darts, hyper, ultra, mega, mega XL, lots of stuff. Um, and this blaster has plenty of plunger volume to fire the 4X elite shells, uh, and it can also fire double that amount of full-length darts as half darts. So in this 3X elite shell, it would be able to hold six half darts and fire those. Mega first. Yes, elite. Okay, XL. Let's get you a better view of it. Fires very nicely. Well, there you go. There's some firing of this prototype. It's very nice. Uh, it's a lot smoother than the previous prototype, the red one I had. Uh, this primes a lot better because uh, of some tolerance changing and some extra uh, repositioning of ball beer ball bearings have been repositioned. There's an extra one here in the middle now, um, and I changed some tolerancing and stuff down here. Uh, it's better now. So uh, yeah, last thing to do. Other than rambling, of course, you gotta have some rambling. Um, is show you the disassembly, or at least field stripping. So, the blaster stock doesn't need to come off, but it's just easier to grab. Um, it's got a tensioning bolt up here in the front, just like Alchemist. Uh, it also has a washer underneath the head of the bolt, but the washer is held in place by the orange muzzle piece, uh, so it's kind of retained and it doesn't uh, fall off when you are loosening the thing. So you loosen the thing, it doesn't need to come all the way out, but it's just loose enough. And then you just kind of slam it to push back the bars a bit. It's got a pin back here on the bottom, right there. And then that is now super loose. Before I forget. So got the pin, comes out, back, and then Everything just slides apart. So you've got your end cap here. Boop. Comes right off. That has your stock and your top picketing rail. You've got your uh, plunger catch here. All self-contained. So this has the catch mechanism in there. And it springs. And then this is a guide for the plunger. So this is what uh, holds the plunger rod and makes sure that it goes in and keeps the plunger tube all aligned in the correct position. Next is the grip. Grip will come off, just like that. And that also has the central bar that the uh, priming handle rides against. So this gives the blaster a bit more structure and it makes sure that the prime is nice and smooth because it has ball bearings riding along it. Uh, similar to how the Alchemist works, where the Alchemist rides the ball bearings and the priming handle against the barrel. This is basically the same system, but it's against an aluminum bar here. And then this has the trigger and stuff all attached to it. You can kind of see in there. There's the back of the trigger. 
and that just pushes up on the uh, little tongue of the catch. Uh, when you're putting this back together on the blaster, you do need to push this up a little bit. So there you go. That's the catch. And then that's your, uh, that's your grip. And then we've got all the uh, body pieces. So this is mid cover. This has that, uh, those ball detent slots that I was talking about. It also has grooves here and here uh, to kind of get out of their way when they're priming so they don't rub against the body of the blaster. Otherwise, this is basically just a spacer with a plunger viewing window up there. Uh, next, I guess we'll take off all of this stuff. This is the this is the piece that the ball defense are currently locked into. Okay. So this is the piece that holds the uh, ejector. You can see there. Got that little foldy outy orange guy. Uh, and that just kind of lives in this lump on the side of the blaster. Has a spring behind it, just pushes out, and that's what the shell hits against to eject. So the extractor on the blaster pulls the shell back, and then it, how can I, how can I do this without being in your way? It, it comes back, and then it hits that, and gets flung out the side like that. So there's that. And then this is the plunger system of the blaster. You can see these are those bowl detents that I was talking about. There's one there on that side and one there on that side. Uh, these three dots here are for the ball bearings, which I'm probably not, probably not going to be able to show you, but they're, they're in this, this slot here. Uh, yeah, good luck seeing that. So there's that. Um, this is the plunger spring. This is a talon claw uh, spring. This is a K25 spring for a talon claw. Um, this blaster is compatible with talon claw springs and lynx springs. Uh, so there's that. Uh, and I'm also uh, on the next file set for this. There is a spacer that you can print to go behind the plunger uh, because with talon claw springs, the length of the spring itself at, at rest. Uh, is different between K25 and 788, and those are the two most common town claw length springs. Um, 788 is a weaker spring, but it extends uh, longer, I believe, at rest. Um, so when you have K25 in there, which is the stronger spring, and which is what I use in this blaster, this is my recommended spring, this will probably be the default K25, um, there's a little bit extra slop, like a few millimeters at full length because I needed to design with the extra allowance for, you know, the other normal spring that would be in there. So there's a little spacer that you can print and put behind the plunger head just to get rid of any spring rattle. Um, you know, just, just a, not a cosmetic thing, but like a, I don't know, thing that would annoy people. So there's a thing in there to, to solve that for you in the future. Uh, this is the plunger. It's very similar, very, very similar to a lot of the other plungers that I've used before. Uh, same plunger head that I've used on a ton of different blasters. Uh, Alchemist, Foxbat, Wild Style, lots of stuff. Um, but this one has an extra little divot in it there. And that's just a lightning cut. So this width down here of the thinner section is the same as this. So there's no extra weakness there. Um, and then this wall here just prevents the plunger from kind of spinning in the plunger guide when it reaches that thinner section. So yeah, that's that. It's just a little bit of weight savings because this is printed at 100% infill, this plunger rod. So it's just a little bit of weight savings. Figured that I'd add that in there. And it's got this adhesive rubber pad at the front. Um, this is, uh, I want to put this down, but it's covered in lube. Here, I'll put it in the, in the catch holder. Anyway. Uh, this is the plunger tube. It is glued on this blaster, uh, like on Cynthia, and, um, like on my Cynthia bolt action, and on the slab. This plunger tube is glued. Uh, however, this gluing setup is a lot better than on most blasters. It has a lot more surface area to glue against, uh, and then also this cap in here, this this 
orange piece that is actually glued to the plunger tube has heat set inserts in it. So it will not loosen over time uh, if you kind of over tighten the screws. Um, you can just keep it. Um, it has heat sets in there, so it'll be fine for using it. Uh, and that is, uh, it has heat sets in there because I don't want the plunger tube to be kind of thrown away if you decide that you want to take apart the blaster for some reason and use the hardware for something else, like years from now. Um, if the plunger tube is like permanently attached to a piece that only works on one blaster, then that kind of messes up that whole plan. So I'm planning on using the same orange uh, glued piece on a bunch of different uh, shoddy blasters. So yeah, that should be good. Uh, that will help with um, not, not parity, but like, I don't know, keeping the same thing across blasters will make it so if you don't want to go and buy another hardware kit, you can kind of get the only the bits that you do need, disassemble this blaster and build whatever new blaster I, I come up with in the future, like the, the tube magazine pump action, for example. So there's that. Uh, this is the extractor here. It's got two springs behind it, and that just uh, grabs onto the shell. So we got this. And it, how am I going to show this on video? It's got this, and then it goes whoop, and grabs on. You can see the springs very badly. There we go. Here's the springs. And then this here is the shell stabilizer. So this just gives the extractor some place to kind of push against uh, as it's pulling out the shell. Um, if there was not this piece of plastic here, the extractor wouldn't really grab onto the rim. It would just kind of push the shell this direction uh, away from it as opposed to actually grabbing onto it. So this shell stabilizer just kind of holds onto it and makes sure that it comes out uh, with the extractor. And then it's got an O-ring at the front just to seal against the shell. Uh, and then there's also O-rings between these uh, bits here that just make this all into one big air-sealed tube that the uh, air goes out. And then it's got a little crossbar in there, so no crap. That's super big. You can kind of make it into the plunger tube. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, but it is uh, it's really nice. I like it. Uh, this part has all come out very well. Um, I'm quite happy with this sort of plunger system and not dropping shells. Uh, buh, 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 buh. What next? So at that point, this is basically all that you're left with. The body bars of the blaster are the same as on Alchemist. So it's got these super long aluminum bars that make up the body, body structure of the blaster. And then it's got this uh, magazine here. The magazine itself is screwed to this body piece here and this piece here, um, these two bits here. Uh, so the only part left to disassemble is this guy up here. Uh, this just dovetails onto the blaster like that. You can see it dovetails onto the rail up there. Uh, and this is just the magazine. So if I wanted to swap this for a shorter one, I would just take out these two screws here and these two screws here and just swap those two bits onto this magazine. Really simple. This has viewing slots along it as well. Just like that. So that's the magazine. And that uses three uh, drum springs. Do I have a drum spring here, for example? I do. Uh -huh. Uses three of these springs just kind of shaped like a music note, I guess. There you go. So this just kind of sits like that, and then this is a coil that can be pulled, and then it pulls back. So it's got three of these in there on the follower that help it come back up. So there's that. And then this is the muzzle piece. Uh, I could take out the thing the rest of the way if I knew where my hex key went. Ah, it is hiding underneath the clip. So we've got this here. This is the uh, bolt 
that tensions the blaster, the tensioning bolt. So it's just a hex thing. And then loosen that up all the way. And this will just pop off. If I loosen it all the way. There we go. So this is just essentially a hollow thing in there that's printed nice and strong. And that is what this bolt uh, pulls all of this stuff against. And then this all pulls this direction against the pin, which then pulls all these body pieces of the blaster against the front and kind of squishes them all together. Makes it nice and strong. And you can see in there, there's a washer in there and that is held in place. Can I move it around like this? Okay. That washer in there is held in place by the orange muzzle so it can never fall out, which is nice. And then this blue bit here, uh, all the way down there at the end of the area, uh, it has a special printing technique um, called sunbursting, which I think me and Taffy coined together. Um, it's essentially a bunch of really small uh, slits or holes or gaps on the inside of the print that forces the slicer, the 3D printing slicer, to put a bunch of walls around when, you, when it's making the 3D printing files. Uh, so essentially, you can print this whole bit at a lower infill, but the slicer will always make that area down there 100% infill, it'll make it solid plastic, because it's, it's sort of tricking it into making it fully full of plastic so it's nice and strong, even if the user doesn't tell it to do that. So it's good. Kind of making sure that it's always printed right uh, no matter what the user does to to fight against the proper way. Uh, I'm not sure if I can show it to you, but this is an example of some of the improvements on the newer bits. It's got this sort of label in there marked back. So that's just so you can assemble this correctly with the bars facing backwards towards the back of the blaster. And then that just has a hex nut in it there. So putting this back together is essentially the same as assembling it for the first time. Um, once you've put together all these sub-assemblies, you just kind of skewer it all onto these two things, like, like a big old kebab. Um, yeah. So we got this. Uh, let's start with putting this back in. You know what? Let's see how quickly I can do this. I'm not going to, like, super rush, but... I'm gonna do it as quick as I reasonably can. Put the tensioning screw back in a bit, but not fully tight. Uh, next is the chamber and the magazine. Gotta line up the bars. So all slides together. Dovetail went back together up there. Uh, what next? I've got the bit that holds the Injector. Once that goes on, um, next let's put on the plunger system. Ah, that is going first. Yep. And I need to push back the injector. Let that pass. And then that all goes on. Held in place by the ball detents there, just during assembly. Uh, what next? Uh, this bit, mid back, or mid block back. I'll just go on there. You can see it's got dovetails there. I hold on the Picatinny rail. Next is the grip. Gotta line up this middle bar with the hole in the back of the priming handle. Uh, let me also line up the body bars. This thing. There we go. That all goes together. Uh, that bar is not secured by anything in the front other than friction. It's got a little slot in there uh, that's kind of tapered. So once the blaster is all squeezed together by the tension system, it holds that in place really, really well. Um, next, the plunger. Uh, gotta make sure that the catch notch is facing up on this blaster. Oop, stick that down there. Get the spring, put that behind it. Uh, next is the catch holder. Line that up with the bars first, and then push up on the catch itself to get it past the, the beaver tail on the grip. And then kind of wiggle 
back this back and forth a bit, make sure that it's lined up with the hole in that bit, like that. There we go. And then assemble this. Let's get out of the way there. So this has another dovetail there on the picatinning rail. Just holds it together. And then this has these two little tongues on the back of the grip frame there. Which you can kind of see those lock into that and make it nice and sturdy. Last, second to last bit is to put the takedown pin in there. Oh, after, make sure that it's all squeezed together. There we go. So make sure that it's all held together loosely. You then push forwards the, the tensioning bolt, or you push it back, I guess, uh, to kind of line up the bar in the back there with the pin. And then this should just, didn't even get in the hole. There it is. Put that in, push it in all the way, and then make sure that is held in place while you just tension up the blaster. Just tighten this back together. Go until it is uh, starting to get snug, and then I usually just do one more turn or like three fourths of a turn after that. And then there you go. You've got the blaster put back together. Did I put the plunger back the correct way? Yes, I did. There you go. That is me firing it while it's primed back. That is the uh, internal magazine bump action blaster. Very nice, very smooth design, and I'm uh, really, really happy with it right now. Uh, so, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, this is, was the second prototype, kind of updated throughout beta. Um, and now that beta has been going for a few weeks now, I've got some feedback, added a bunch of uh, improvements to the blaster, and I'm pretty much ready to do another full prototype print of a full another blaster. Um, and I think that might be the last one that I do before release. I'm planning on releasing this this year in 2024, which leaves me the last little bits of October, November, and December. Essentially two months. Um, but I'm planning on getting it done in November, if I can kind of get the assembly, or not to get the assembly, if I can get the um, hardware list and stuff all get together for the shops, so they can like build kits and stuff before people actually go and buy them. You want to have some ready in time before people it goes up for sale. You want to have some stock. Um, so depending on how long that takes and some other things like writing an assembly guide and making the graphics for the description and stuff like that, videos essentially, um, all the ancillary stuff takes a bit of time. So assuming that I can get that done, this should release in November? which is next month, I hope. It's it's surprisingly good for how quickly it went together. Uh, I think I did the first um, prototype at the, what, at the start of September, I think? So it's been essentially two months that I've had this in hand. Uh, and I think it's good for release, essentially. So, um, yeah, pretty great. Um, Things to close off the video, uh, this filament was provided by Polymaker, uh, free of charge to me, uh, so there's that, disclaimer, and uh, go check out my Patreon and subscribe in the video description. Yeah, thanks for watching!